Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to show you something that we just experienced lately uh, or recently on our 70 uh, recent build and that is as you can see we took off our generator pulley now why do we do this? Well look at this motor and I've done a video on this once before in the past and we powder coated the tins I powder coated the pulleys and I powder coated even this generator pulley which to my gut, I shouldn't have done. I should have listened to myself uh, from the video I did a few years ago on just painting the generator pulley. So what happens when you powder coat your pulleys and what could happen to you? So what we were noticing is on, on high RPMs, we heard a screeching sound. And I was also noticing that the motor was running fairly hot. Uh, and this could be a common problem with you. So what was happening was since you powder coat these, the, the pulleys, like even this one here, the it's such a slippery surface that the belt was slipping in between the pulleys the two pulleys that sandwich it together so at the high rpms the belt was slipping so what happens is when the belt slips now this generator is not performing efficiently enough and is not cooling the motor well enough i would go out for a short drive and i could not touch i mean the fan shroud was so hot the dipstick was so hot to touch. The motor in general was running very, very hot. And uh, so something to keep in mind, I'm gonna come over here and show you what we did. Let's go around here. Okay, so here's the powder coated pulleys. And as you can see, look at the shims were digging into uh, the powder coat. Okay, and as, I mean, you can feel this, you can catch your nail on this. That's not good, you know, it almost acts as another shim. Okay, so, and on the back surface here, this is so, you can see where the belt was rubbing. This is so nice and smooth, and it even smoothed out the belt. So this was just giving some slippage, and uh, again, it, the, the generator was then not performing the way it should have. So then we even tried, you know, grinding off the old powder coat. And as you can see here, put on a wire wheel. You could do some sandpaper and sand this all off. I would suggest doing it on both if you want to use your existing pulley. But uh, I had another pulley uh, in my pulley bin, and I was able to find one that I just painted up. Uh, this is just some basic paint uh, that we use, some Krylon stuff. I think I got it over here if you want to see. Okay, so this stuff came out pretty good. It's like a paint primer in one sort of thing. Um, dries in 15 minutes. This is perfect. Let it sit overnight, though, because you want the paint to cure. Uh, but the best thing to do, you know, to when you're painting these things, is of course you want to clean them up. You want to use some lacquer thinner to to you know wipe down uh, the material, whatever you're going to paint. So you don't want any fish eyes and stuff. As I'm noticing lately, a lot of with these paints off the shelf, you know, the material uh, fish eyes after it dries and or it gets crinkly. This seems to. Uh, to really get the job done for you. So paint on the back here is very light and the belt will scratch this off, but if you did want to sand this off, you can. Uh, so that's probably what I would do. Um, but yeah, so to powder coat or not to powder coat, I know it is a very popular way today to you know, show off your motor compartment, show off your floor pans, things like that, but sometimes there's a downside, right? So uh, now I'm gonna show you how to attach your pulley. And before you uh, attach the pulley, uh, I wanted to talk to you about this, this paint prep that I get from DupliColor. You get this at AutoZone. This is also good to spray on your material before you spray them with paint. This seems to really get all the impurities out and oils and, and whatnot uh, on your uh, item that you're going to paint and uh, should not fish eye with this. If you don't have this, you could use you know, paint thinner or lacquer thinner or something like that to wipe down the the material or even good old soap and water. But this paint uh, prep seems to do really well. Okay, so here's the first half of the pulley that has to go on the generator. And uh, this has to go over a little woodruff key. There's a slot there, of course. Always grease that up in there because you want this to go over easy 
uh, on the woodruff key and on this shaft on the generator many times that woodruff key will pop out uh, when you try to put on this half of the pulley uh, and then make sure when you got your belt on here get the right size belt to uh, try to go through either Wolfsburg West or CIP1 or any VW shop it seems like most local uh, uh, auto repair shops don't do not have the right size pulley for your Volkswagen uh, so you might have to order those um, but I uh, just want to make sure that your your belt is on your crank pulley first and then you put the uh, that protective tin that goes over uh, uh, the crank pulley nut um, that they put on late on some of the later bugs but um, so here we go what you're going to want to do is just set up your belt here first well, actually let me get this pulley on first all right so I remember I greased it up line up my woodruff key and hopefully this should slide right on and if it doesn't you can criticize me later <laughs> but let's see if it's a little stubborn you can use your socket that you're going to use to tighten up your nut and kind of hammer it on there okay so that should go all the way back just like that you might want to double check just make sure your woodruff key did not snap or slide up you can get a light in there just to double check but uh, usually it won't go back that far if uh, or bottom out if uh, the woodruff key did not get caught in there so you should be okay with that okay so now that you got your this pulley on that goes on the generator next is of course to put on the other half so you want to set your your belt up okay just like this it should be right around there that's where they should sit this will stretch okay so let me get my shims now remember with these shims you can buy these brand new too uh, there should be 10 total now you're not going to use 10 in here that you have to uh, take a look and see how that has to be adjusted because many times uh, you might need, you might only need two or three in between here maybe four five I don't know you don't have to test it out tighten it down test the tension of the belt to make sure what how many shims you need in between now the ones you do not use in the middle of uh, the, the pulley setup you use on the front side, but I'll show you that in a few minutes. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, six shims that are going to go over this. There's the other one there. Now you then grab the other half of the pulley. Let's set that up and make sure inch that in you want it to go on even you want to you know move the belt a little bit just to kind of inch this pulley up a little bit better then you get your thrust washer that looks like this put that on oh actually I forgot my shims okay put my shims here so what happens is is you have to use the other shims in the front of the thrust washer okay on this side because if you don't then usually sometimes this can bottom out the nut can bottom out on the threads and then there's no tension all right so you definitely going to want that those shims to be used it's like a, a holding point here like if you had to reuse use these shims later on you take them out and put them on the middle now in the middle um, most people say you know you, you don't want to put less than ordinarily less than two shims in the middle there some people put just one shim just to get the belt tighter uh, I don't feel comfortable with just one shim I would say at least two shims has to be in the middle of the this pulley setup okay so just get that on finger tight kind of move the belt move the nut a little bit more just to kind of ease its way in so everything's all li nice and lined up so move the belt a little bit and I can still move the nut by hand just to kind of get that set up and you want to look and make sure everything's even you don't want this pulley cocked in any way and then also take a look on the side of the car okay either side and look inward this way and make sure everything is actually lined up you don't want this pulley out further than the crank pulley I've seen cars where especially in the 40 horse era where they got the wrong pulley on the generator and the way the pulley sits it sits further out and all of a sudden the belts on an angle okay that'll wear the belt down you'll bust that belt up so uh, definitely want to make sure this is all nice and even and lined up perfectly okay so then basically I just get 
This is the uh, 13 16 socket. It's also your spark plug socket that could work. And then I just start just turning it. And that basically gives you an idea. And your belt should be about a half inch free play, half inch squeeze, so to speak, that needs to be in there. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. And um, yeah. That's the way it should be. Now, some people put a you know a, a long-handled screwdriver in there to hold this down to lock it into place. You could do that, or you just simply get okay. One more check, and we're good. So what, I, what was happening last time, like I said, is I was turning this pulley and as I was turning it, it was sliding. The belt was basically staying stationary and the pulley was spinning, so this was sliding and that's not good. You don't want that sliding action happening. Like I said, what was happening, is it was not cooling the motor efficiently enough. Now we did big bore on this, so it's a 1641, so naturally it's gonna run a little hotter uh, than, than a, a normal 1600 would be, but not much. Uh, so I need as much cooling as I can get really. So uh, this wasn't working right. So, and I was even noticing a lack of power uh, in the motor over time. So once the motors, these motors get hot, they lose power. So, um, okay guys, that's that tip for today. Pulleys, paint them, don't powder coat them just to stay safe. And uh, you know, make sure you're, you got your, your setup here all right and you don't wanna have the wrong, I see the wrong pulleys on the wrong year sometimes, the wrong generators, so make sure you're getting the right pulley for your year bug. And uh, make sure all your tin work is also set up the way it should be to also keep your motor running efficiently. All right, guys, take care. Um.